Hey everybody, welcome back to Jay Smith Now a Football Podcast. I'm your host, Shane Gay, here today with Gondon Guest, head football coach at Hebron Christian Academy. Uh, coach, I appreciate you joining us on the podcast today. Thank you, Jaden. I, I feel like it's a privilege to be on your podcast, and I'm super proud of you for getting this podcast going and sticking with it. Yes, sir. Thank you. Now, Coach, Talk about what uh, you know. Well, first off, how's things? How are everything going with you? You know, you us uh, at Hebron, and you guys are in the summer, summer workouts and stuff like that. How's everything going? Everything's going really well. Um, you know, working hard. We had, you know, you're interviewing me today's July night, so we're on our dead week. Um, but we had a great spring, and the kids really bought in, and the coaches bought in, and that led to uh, we had a really good month of June. Uh, summer workouts and doing seven on sevens and lime and stuff and um, couldn't be doing any better. Lots of excitement, lots of hard work. So, uh, you know, you know me, like I always say, work hard and see what happens. Yep, that's right. Uh, so, Coach, you know, mentioning here, Brian, so what talk about what played a factor into you moving from a championship winning program that you built over at Elka for all those years and, you know, moving over to Hebron. Talk about what played a factor into that. Jaden would be the Lord. Um, you know, I wasn't looking to move. I wasn't looking um, to go anywhere different. Um, and and the Lord just through different means opened up this opportunity at Hebron. Um, and then kind of just led me to take it, to be honest with you, through a lot of prayer and a lot of seeking him and um, talking to a lot of different people. Um, I just thought like the Lord was leading me to go to Hebron. Uh, been at Elka for 15 years, and it has been awesome. And I think the cool thing is, is one of the first guys that I was able to coach over a four-year time frame from my, his freshman year to his senior year, um, my first full class of kids was Tanner Rogers. And he was my defensive coordinator. And, you know, I love Elka. But Elka isn't my school. It's his school. <laughs> and so yeah. Yeah. I just thought it was, the timing of God was really perfect. Um, been there 15 years, built it, can hand it off to Tanner, who that was his school that he went to his whole entire life. And then God has given me another opportunity at Hebron to go do the same thing that I've done for the past 15 years. And that's the goal, is that we make Hebron – uh, one of the best football playing schools in the state of Georgia. Yep, absolutely. So, Coach, what are you looking to bring to the Hebron community on and off the field? You know, just the different – what are you – the vibes you're trying to bring to the school and the, the, the parents, the families, the students, the players, everything? What are you trying to implement here? I think it's just who I am is the fact – well – I don't know if I'm trying to bring anything specific except for what I believe and who I am. And, you know, I coach football, as you know, I coach football um, as a tool to preach Christ, to preach Jesus Christ and, and, and try to help these boys become the very best that they possibly can be, not just in football, uh, but more importantly, as men, as people. Um, and also try to inf and impact the, the student body in the same way and the parents in the same way and the community in the same way. Um, and I do that by preaching two things, really, like Jesus Christ, you know, and trying to live by his standards and, um, and then work. Like, we're going to work our tails off. Uh, we're going to work every day. We're going to work long. We're going to work hard. Uh, getting good is not easy. Uh, the process is not fun, nope. uh, but the joy is in the results. The joy is in the success. Um, and if you can get your mind wrapped around the process of work, there's joy in that. Like we had a, we worked really hard in June and we had a really, really hard spring practice. But when you look back on it, it was full of joy. So you can have a good time, but you just have to have the right expectations practice is not fun no it's not 
Summer workouts are not fun, but they're a necessity for you to become the very best that you possibly can become and to develop your character. So that's what I'm bringing to the table. That's just who I am and what I believe in. Um, and, you know, the beautiful thing is, is most people want that. If you want to win, you want that. So everybody's bought in. It's been a really good experience. Yeah. And it's always the hard things, you know, we don't want to do them, the things we don't, that we don't want to do, but they're essential in life, you know, and it's just a matter of you got to go do it, uh, you know, but not saying that I have to do this, but I get to do it. You get, you, you have the chance to do what you do. So, you know, I learned that, but coach, uh, how have things been going so far with the team, you know, and who are some of the guys that you're looking forward to, you and your staff are looking forward to this upcoming season? Yeah, you know, the development of the team, and the team is really gelling together really well. Um, cool thing is, is I had no idea. I, didn't, I had no idea. When I was going to take the job at Hebron, I didn't watch any film. I didn't try to find out who their players were, anything like that. It was really kind of just, you know, me and my family, us praying through it. Is Does God want us to go to Hebron? So what type of football players they had or – anything it really didn't matter is god calling us to go here because if he's calling us to go there we'll have success but the coolest thing is is i came up there and i found out we have some really big boys some big linemen um and i believe we have one of the best quarterbacks in the state of georgia in the class of 2024 he's a dual sport kid gavin hall um, and he's a dual athlete. He's a, he can run, he can throw, um, and he's just got a sixth sense about him, a moxie to him that he is phenomenal. Um, and it's been really cool because I think he's never really been developed um, and really been in an offense or on a team that can really cultivate and uh, play to his talents. Um, and what I want to do offensively fits exactly who he is. So we're super excited um, in, about Gavin. Um, you know, and then I could talk about a few other guys. Um, there's, there's a lot of different players I could talk about, but got some seniors that I'm real excited about. Um, got a lineman, JT Sparing, plays offensive line and defensive line. A uh, really great leader, hardworking kid, another offensive lineman, defensive lineman, uh, David Pierre, a uh, really hardworking kid, big kid, uh, probably going to play more defensive line, but probably as an athlete, our best uh, lineman for sure. And then got a big linebacker that's a senior in Thomas McVicker. He's about 6'1", 6'2", uh, 210 pounds, mm. uh, tremendous potential. Um, our safety, maybe strong safety, Alex Pinella. Um, we call him AP. Just a tremendous leader. Um, got another wide receiver, slot type guy, Jake Redman. Yeah. Great leader. Um, I mentioned it to you, seniors. Um, another guy, Kamsey. Uh, can't say his last name, it's way too complicated, but we call him <laughs> Kamsey. First name is Kamsey. Um, Man, he's super quick. I think he's going to play D-line for us. Uh, super explosive. Um, and it's, So those are our seniors plus Gavin. Um, trying to think if I missed anybody. I think I got them all. There's not too many of them. Uh, but really excited about them and, and helping them become all that they can be, not just as football players, but, you know, it's their turn to lead, um, lead a football team. So um, I'm real excited about it. Yeah, sounds like it. And – Coach, I, you know, I know you're going to implement, of course, just, hey, no matter where, you know, doesn't start, it doesn't matter where you start, but it matters where, you know, how you finish, right? You know, so it's just that that grind, you know, every day, you know, weight room, you know, and uh, practice, all that stuff, you know, it, it's it's a process and you have to trust it, you know, so know that how big that is for you. And, and these guys are, are going to be at a different level, uh, than what they are right now, you know, at in the season, you know, at, you know, middle of the season, begin the season, things like that, because it's just you know work, 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 right? So, uh, but coach, talk about you know, are there any things that you would like to see implemented into high school football right now by GHSA? Is there anything you like to see different go on, or you know, or 
if not anything at all? Yeah, you know, Jaden, I've been doing this for so long. Every two years, Georgia High School, uh, they're going to come up with new rules and new this and new that. So I really don't even care anymore. Um, you know, whatever's whatever. So as long as I get a 10-game schedule and I get to play football teams uh, and we get to go and compete and, and we have something to work towards, I'm super excited. I know it's a really hard job to try to make everybody happy and every coach happy and every school happy and try to make sure that there's no unfair advantages in every situation. I realize that's a really hard job and I don't really think that there's a good answer or an answer anybody's interested in or everybody would be happy about. So I really have no issues. I do have one issue and it's always with Arthur Blank. I don't understand why <laughs> he will not open up the Mercedes Benz stadium to high school football in the state of Georgia because we, I believe, the best high school football coaches and the best high school football players in the country are in the state of Georgia. And yep. we can't even get our NFL team, the Atlanta Falcons, and Arthur Blank to open up the Mercedes Benz. So these people, these football players, these schools, these towns, these counties, they have that dream of getting into that Mercedes Benz stadium one day. I don't understand that. It blows my mind. Um, I think that's the one, and that, that's not a Georgia high school problem. That's a, that's an Arthur blank problem. And I'm not rooting for the Falcons or going to a Falcons game until it's fixed. <laughs> Cause uh, you know what? I'm all with you right there. You know, I mean, those two years that we played, uh, in the bins, it, it was amazing. It was fun. Yeah. And one year it was like snowing like crazy. I do remember that. We were like the only team that got to play. Do you remember that? Yeah, I do remember that. <laughs> uh, but, and it's just a really nice experience that you wish all these other schools get to have. But of course, that's not the case with Arthur Blank. So um, I like that you mentioned that there. I'm, I wish, you know, it, yeah, but it is what it is. Uh, but, Coach, you know, they're all three phases of the game are important, you know, offense, defense, special teams. But really, a lot of things that, you know, people don't really realize is that special teams are huge and can swing a game. You know, so talk about how important that is to you and, and why it is crucial that the special teams phase is on point for your football team. Yeah, well, here's my philosophy on special teams, and it's probably not the correct philosophy, but it's mine. Don't screw up on special teams. Yeah. Don't mess up. So I always look at it like this. What's the two special teams that can get you beat? It's kickoff and it's punt, all right? But really, it's punt return, too, because we had a horrible, horrible uh, dropped punt in the state semifinals this year that probably cost us the game. There's probably six things I can say that cost us the game. But when you go back and you track down to it, muffing a punt inside your own 10-yard line in the state semifinals, you're probably going to get beat. And, and, you know, so looking back on it all, my philosophy's always been don't make – don't make mistakes on special teams. So I'm very conservative uh, from a special team standpoint. Like if I think you can return a punt, um, I'm not punting it to you. If I think that you can return a kickoff, I'm not kicking it to you. So we spent a lot of time on that, making different kicks, kicking it different ways, different angles, things like that. Uh, we spent a lot of time on PAT, being able to make our PATs. And we don't spend a ton of time on kickoff return and and blocking field goals and what else what's the other one kickoff return we don't spend a lot of time on that either we've played such good teams we can't even ever return a kickoff anyway because they all kick it to the end zone yeah. um so that's my philosophy Jaden. a lot of coaches would disagree and and they're probably correct but i don't want to get beat on special teams and so man really i'm coming to hebron with a renewed focus on that. We're not going to drop a ball inside our 20-yard line return to punt. We're not going to kick a ball to a kid that can return a kickoff for a touchdown. Because remember, don't I know you remember Chris County two years ago. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I remember. Yeah. We're, we're rolling, man. We're up 14 nothing, and then my stupid tail – decides to kick it deep to the fastest kid on the team and he returns it 14-7. So um, 
and then um, we're going to punt. Um, you're not going to let you block our punt. And then we're going to, if you if you look fast, we're not going to kick it to you. Um, and then we're going to work on getting it down there and getting the guy down. So that's my philosophy on special teams. Um, don't screw up. Yeah, and that's it, it. Can be hard to you know to not do that sometimes, but it's it's a big important part of the game because it can really swing momentum. You know, like you said, you kick the ball to the fastest guy on the field, and he returns it for a touchdown. You know, that's they, they got momentum. They're feeling something. You know, they they're pumped up, and it's like you know you're, you're it, it's it can be really hard to uh, overcome special team woes. You know, and I I know you remember speaking on that Chris County game. I know you remember that of. Uh, that fake punt <laughs> they had that Chris pulled. Um and that that was huge. I know you coach you, you do know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, I do remember that. It was a fake punt, but we had it defended, Jaden. <laughs> it tipped off somebody's hand into the fastest player on the, the their fastest player and he runs in. But you know what, man, that's sports. It's so frustrating. Um, you know, and it's sometimes you just be like, okay, I just trust in the sovereignty of God. You know, like the Lord has judged me on this game, Chris County game. And, um, you know, for things like that to happen. But, that, you know, I felt like we had that played really, really well. But, like, man, that was just like the Red Sea party. So, mm -hmm. what are you going to do? Yeah, there's nothing you can do. Uh, so, Coach. Now, offensively, defensively, um, you know, what, what is the philosophy heading into the next season? What, what are you trying to establish on offensive end? Is it still going to be run heavy or you might make a little bit more pass in there? Or, you know, because I know you got a lot that loves, you know, to pound the rock. So what, what's, what's the mindset? Yeah, it's just off, offensively, it's just be physical, man. Like, that's my mindset. That's just how I'm wired. Like, I want to be physical. I want to break you. I want to break your will. I want to wear you down. Um, and so, man, you do that by running the football and and um, just being extremely physical up front and uh, being committed to your offensive line and, and, and coaching your offensive line really good and and, and, and wanting to have the best offensive line in the state. And then, you know, and then we're going to take shots. You know, we want to throw the ball deep. We, we want to put a lot of pressure on the defense to, to not know, are they running the ball? Are they going to throw the ball deep? So that's kind of the philosophy there is, man, we're going to be physical and we don't want to turn the ball over. So those two things offensively and then defensively, we just want to make sure – few things defensively we're going to line up correctly we're going to know our know our assignment we're going to fly to the football and we're going to try to be great tacklers i say try to be because if you're not a great athlete you're not going to be a great tackler so it really kind of depends on the talent pool that god gives you on whether your team's going to tackle well or not but what can help you tackle well is if all 11 players are running to the ball and then it's a collective effort to get that guy down. So that's who we're going to be. Like, we're not going to be complicated. I'm not going to sit there and try to run 47 different coverages or try to be smart um, either on offense or defense. We're going to be masters of execution and controlling the variables and controlling the things that we can control. And that's pretty much the philosophy. Yeah, is know your roles, do your job, right? You know, that's – and, I mean, look at the most successful football teams, you know, in, in each each level, whether it's high school, collegiately, or in the NFL. It's like when everybody is doing their job and they know their roles and the team is executing, they, they win. It's, it's simple. I think, and I think we overcomplicate football a lot of the times, you know, like it, even in, at the highest level. It, I mean, it really isn't that hard, but they make it hard. You know what I mean? So, but well, it's a it's the problem of man, and we all struggle with it. Is we really want people to think we're intelligent, and so therefore we try to make things like we have to think we have to do things so people will think we're smart, but. I'm really, really smart when Keaton Mitchell is running the football. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, definitely. So, Coach, um, it, in all your years of being around this game, you know, coaching football, 
uh, just what is the craziest game? Like just everything's just going haywire, like or, that you've ever coached, or it's like you can't, you can't believe this happened or this or what? You know what? Out of all the games you coached, what is has to be the most like bizarre, craziest game you've ever been a part of? Well, the two that's popping in my mind, and it's kind of just recently, but you know, obviously that Chris County game was so bizarre. You know, we we go. I mean, we're up. I mean, we're up twenty one fourteen or what? Maybe it was twenty fourteen. There's we're we're pounding them. They're done. They're dead. This is in twenty twenty. Um, and we drive all the way down the field in the fourth quarter, about five minutes to go. Can't remember what it was. And then, you know, we run, we've been running the same play, which, you know, we all know is power to the right. If you know anything about Elka football and me coaching it, that's what we do. Yeah. And by the fourth quarter, if we've been doing it right, you can't stop it, even though you know it's coming. And I remember, you know, Philip Massengale's the quarterback, and uh, I don't think Josh was playing. Till, yeah, he was, but he got hurt that yeah, game. Yeah, he did get hurt, yeah. So, and then – and that I'm going to knock on DJ Chester here since he's getting all these offers and he's getting this and that, but he was a young sophomore playing center and we run power to the right. Right. And for whatever reason, he blocks back the wrong way and their big 300 pound defensive lineman barrels into the backfield, right? As Phillips hand the ball off, we fumble, they get the ball and then we hold them. Like, we got them. It's over. It's fourth and 12. There's like two minutes left to go in the game. We're up by six. It's the game over, right? Maybe it's four minutes to go in the game. I don't know. But they do that fake punt, and we had it covered. And we hit the kid right as he goes to catch it and nail him. Ball flops up in the air to one of their players, and he goes and scores. That was a crazy game. And then, honestly, um, I don't want Coach Dallas to get mad at me from uh, from Trinity because he and I are great friends. But the semifinal game against Trinity this year was – it was just one of those games where you, you, when you get done with it, I felt like we had outplayed them all game long, had them schemed up. We had missed a ton of opportunities that we shouldn't have missed – but still had capitalized on a lot of things. And then in the, even still, even still with all the mistakes, we're up 35, 28 with a minute and a half to go. And one specific player gets two personal foul penalties to give them the ball on the 50. Mm. And then, you know, of course, David Dallas does his Houdini stuff and they end up winning the game. That I just got done with that game. And I'm like, God wanted Coach Dallas to win. You know, like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was just – so really, honestly, those two games in recent memory kind of stick out in my mind. Um, and honestly, I don't know if I've had a game in my career as, as so – where you – we in both games, we so outplayed the other team but still lost um, as those two games. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it, th- those two games were both I had the chance to, you know, well, be a part of one game and then watch the other one. They were both crazy games. And like, man, should have won both of those. Uh, but, you know, like you said, it's things happen, you know, and that are out of our control sometimes. And we don't, you know, the best thing to do is just keep moving. So. Uh, but, Coach, I appreciate your time coming on the podcast today, talking some ball with us as we move closer to the 2022 season. You know, I want to wish you guys the best of luck over at Hebron. And I know you're going to have those boys working. And, uh, of course, we're all chasing that same goal of a state title. So good luck to you guys this year. Hey, I, pr- I appreciate you, Jaden. And I'm super proud of you.